Hi, my name is Brian Padden and I'm from uh, ACES UK. Um, I want to chat a little bit today about the current problem uh, that schools will face in, in terms of mental health when schools reopen after the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, but first to give you a little bit of a, a history on where we are with, with childhood mental health in schools. The last figures available um, showed that we have currently 12.5% of our school population children who have a diagnosable mental health problem. Uh, children that are suffering from mental health problems that don't reach the high threshold for diagnosis we think is around about 45%. So that's an awful lot of children in our schools that need support for mental health, whether it's at diagnosed level or underdiagnosed level. We do know that 50% um, of signs of mental health problems first start by the age of 14. On an average, it takes 10 years between first spotting the signs of a mental health problem and receiving treatment. We also know that the local NHS areas, the clinical commissioning groups, spend less than 1% of their entire budget on childhood mental health. Uh, they spend 14 times more on adult mental health, despite the fact that children make up 20% of our current population and will make up 100% of our future population. Childhood mental health is massively under, underfunded. <laughs> These are the problems before the current climate. Uh, the current climate adds to that problem. <coughs> Last year, uh, 830,000 children witnessed domestic violence. So far in this pandemic, um, there has been an increase in calls to refuge the domestic violence charity of 700%. Uh, that means we, we know there's an increase in one adverse childhood experience, one ace, which is domestic violence. Other aces include physical abuse, mental abuse, uh, emotional abuse, uh, parents having uh, drug problems, alcohol problems and others as well. We don't know what the upturning up that is, what the increase is, although there will, will definitely be an increase in that. The reason we don't know how much more uh, they are going to buy is because their children are not school. School staff are trained to support children, to see the signs of physical, emotional abuse and neglect. Um, and also, um, children will sometimes disclose to member staff if there's a problem at home. That chance, uh, that option to disclose that is now taken away from the child with the schools being closed. That's just one of the problems that, that um, closing schools is going to be having on children. Another one is the poverty in the quarter, which some of the children will face. Some of the children I'm supporting at the moment have nice big houses, nice big gardens, uh, good internet connection, laptops, their own bedrooms, so they can access the homework that's being sent to them, all the schoolwork. They can still have some so social contact with friends, albeit by a distance. Other children I'm supporting live in small, cramped houses. Um, they don't have the privacy of their own bedroom. They don't have internet connection. They don't have computers at home. So straight away, in terms of schoolwork, they're falling behind. In terms of um, contact with friends uh, online, that, that, that's gone also. Now, some of these children will be classed as vulnerable or they may be um, children of key workers, so schools will be providing some um, support, uh, although not educational support. But for uh, others, they will still be vulnerable, um, but they will be the invisible vulnerable that don't fit into a category such as key workers or have a social worker there to support them. Um, some of the other things that, that these uh, pupils will be missing in school, um, for, for the students who do have difficult home lives, School can be sometimes the only place where they have a trusted adult, uh, someone they can talk to, um, someone who is there for them, someone who can uh, help them through difficult problems, help with their emotions, help them to self-regulate. Mark Bellis, Professor Mark Bellis from Bangor University did a huge study into the effects of ACEs and discovered that a child um, who has a trusted adult in their childhood, um, it can, that, that adult can make a big difference in reversing the effects of ACEs, it can reduce um, the chances of having mental health problems, severe physical health problems, having a trusted adult in childhood can give it, can reduce the chance of you going to prison, uh, it can reduce the chance of being a drug addict, it can reduce the chance of being homeless, it can reduce the chance of suicide attempts. 
Um, so it's really important that children have access, certainly children with a difficult home life, have access um, to a trusted adult at home. When children get back to school, there will be an explosion uh, in mental health problems. Uh, there are already children that have mental health problems that the staff know about. There's going to be a, a big influx of new cases of mental health problems. And schools do not have mental health practitioners in them, their teachers. And why would you trust a geography teacher to cure anxiety? You just wouldn't do it. Schools need to look at um, increasing the pastoral support from it with uh, mental health problems, but that support needs to be funded by not the school budget, but NHS budget and public health England budget. Uh, this is the only way that long term we're going to be able to support children with mental health problems.